Merlin is a new AI tool that I just bought for myself, but did I make a terrible mistake? For the past year, I've been using Harpa AI to summarize YouTube videos and as my favorite Chrome plugin. I've never upgraded to their paid version because I find their pricing inscrutable and I've never needed it to do more than the free version can handle. When I saw Merlin offering a lifetime deal on AppSumo, I had to grab it and check it out. I have 60 days to kick the tires before the refund period expires. Merlin includes access to 20 different AI models, operates as a plugin, and has a ton of features that I haven't tested yet. I'm gonna compare the pricing models, features, and promises that Merlin makes and see if this wizard is going to cast success or summon a flop. Before we can look at Merlin, we need to look at the competition, which is Harpa. I've been using Harpa AI for a long time. The way this plugin works is it connects directly with ChatGPT. So I need ChatGPT open and logged in. It doesn't go through the API. So there's no incremental cost. That's how they're able to operate a free version. It's not costing them anything every time I ask a question. And when I go to ChatGPT, I can see it in the conversations. Let's go through some of Harpa's big promises just to compare it as our baseline before we jump into Merlin. So the main value is that has all of these different features from YouTube summarizer to writing that mimics my style to tracking page updates to an all-in-one package. Now the tracking page updates thing is really cool. That's only in the paid version where if a website posts a new video or a new blog post, it can trigger a bunch of automations very similar to what browse.ai does. And that's how I trigger a lot of my automations, but it is a cool feature. One of the things I found interesting and almost got me to upgrade Harpa. Now, the big problem is that it's too many features. And I think Merlin suffers from the same thing. It just gets me overwhelmed. I'm never going to test all of these features. To do a comprehensive video, you're talking about four or five hours of video and you're not going to watch that. And I don't want to make that. So we're really going to just touch the surface to see if it's worth the value, if it crosses the bridge of what its value is. The interesting new feature is this ability to use agents in your browser. We're going to test a little bit of that as we dig into Merlin to see if Merlin's paid version is better than Harpa's free version. The place where I get lost with Harpa, and this is their biggest mistake, is their pricing is confusing. They have S1 for everyone, S2 for pros and teams, and X for life. They say it's $12 billed annually, but I believe they mean it's $12 per month billed annually. So see, it's $12 a month, nothing changes. There's no, they say 25% AI tokens. You don't get a discount for doing annual, you get more AI tokens. You have 75 mega tokens per year or five mega tokens a month. I don't understand what a mega token is. I've read all of their explanations. It's just confusing. It's hard enough when you have one currency which are the chat GPT or the open AI tokens, which are about four characters, but not exactly. So different letters use slightly more, slightly less than four. It's just hard enough to go to an arcade when you have one set of tokens. Now I've got tokens and mega tokens for different games. All this does is add a layer of confusion and I don't trust that. To me, that creates a lot of distrust and it's probably the biggest reason that I haven't purchased. X for life, I looked at, I don't understand the difference. So they have all of these different things, personal use only on not single user spaces, non-recurring AI token balance. I don't know that I need AI tokens because I've never used one. So this is why Harpa, while I use the tool, it's never gotten me to spend any money. This is where they make their big mistake. Let's take a look at Merlin's promises and see if it's a little easier to understand. Merlin's big promise at the top of their page is they get 26 different AIs in one. It can research, create, and summarize. Very clear promise, they keep it simple. They already have a Chrome plugin, iPhone app, and an Android app. You can watch the video to see what they do, but very simple, you install the plugin, create your account, and then you can start using it whenever you hit Command M or Control M, so M activates Merlin. I don't know if it's gonna take action outside of Chrome. I don't think it will. When I look at their models, as much as they say there's 26, I really only see four, which is different versions of ChatGPT, different versions of Claude, different versions of Gemini, and different versions of Mistral. Yes, that's a way to get up to 26, but it's a little bit wonky to me. It feels like a little bit sneaky, but all of the features that I'm used to seeing from Harpa are right here. They even give you access to the exact same helpers or the same users. So if you're a marketer, they give you ideas of what you can do. They charge $19 per month annually. We're gonna look at their pricing in just a second. Overall, this website to me, it's okay. It's not great. I don't really believe all of the promises. I'm so used to websites putting on, oh, Zoom uses us and Uber uses us and Sony uses us and Netflix uses us. I don't know if it's true. I'm kind of suspicious, especially when they have their affiliate program at the top of the page. So this is why I've always been hesitant about this tool. However, a good friend of mine uses the tool and recommended it to me. And I said, wait, I think I just grabbed it recently. So there's two, 
different reasons it's on my radar. Let's dive into their pricing. They have the free forever where you can ask 102 queries per day and you can still use some advanced features like ChatGPT 3.5, 4, and 4.0. 4.0 is free. It really depends how they're integrating with ChatGPT. If they're not using the API the way Harper does, then they don't have an incremental cost. What's interesting is that they do the exact same thing cell phone companies do where they say you have unlimited, but not really. They send limited as long as you're doing fair use and using it responsibility. So exploitative or extreme use may lead to account limitations or harmful usage may use to account closure. These are very vague terms. I don't know what can, is considered extreme usage. Am I an extreme user? I'm not sure. I don't, I don't think I've ever done over the 102 queries a day, so I'm probably fine. But I think if someone's using it to just really run like automations or having a software on top of Merlin, that's where the problem is. So it's either $20 a month or $19 a month. You get 20 times more access to ChatGPT 4.0 than ChatGPT, I'm not sure. You can chat with unlimited documents, website, YouTube videos, new AI models on the same plan, unlimited images, input supported in chat. So this has an image generator, which is pretty cool. Overall, it seems pretty interesting. If you compare the two plans, I have the unlimited plan because I purchased on AppSumo and I'm gonna show you what that is right now. So this deal is still available while I'm recording this for a little less than 10 days. That's why I wanna record the video quickly and get it out the door. I bought this a week ago and realized it's worth making a video about and I wanted to cover it for you right now. The alternatives, I don't know who wrote this page, but it's not an alternative copy Grammarly or Jasper. It does a completely different thing because none of those are Chrome plugins. So I really think of it as an alternative to Harpa and that's how I'm gonna review it. Gives you the ability to chat with the top AI models. You can chat with any PDF. You can analyze any website. All the things you'd expect from a plugin. You can create content for social media. You can summarize an entire YouTube video, a blog or anything else like that. It's kind of the same promise we just saw a second ago. So let's start by doing a head-to-head -head comparison. This is a video I posted earlier this week to my channel, AI News of the Week. There were about eight to 10 news stories. As always, the video is under 20 minutes. It's a 13 minute video. This is the most common type of video that I'm gonna use this tool on to summarize to see if I need any of the stories. I have multiple plugins that will summarize. I have this one, I'm not even sure which one this is. Glasp, which I didn't even realize I still had installed. I have Merlin and I have Harpa. And well, what we're gonna do is compare each of these. The one difference is that Merlin has this little credit count. So you can, I've never used a credit. I have 12,000 queries left. Let's summarize this video and see how many credits it costs. It's summarizing it. This is slower than Harpa, but not by that much. Let's see, let's scroll down. It's annoying that I have to have so many sliders I'm working through the main slider and this slider. Let's see, Perplexities offer such great option. Perplexities Ethics, Microsoft Boss, Lack of Clarity, YouTube allows remove request, Instagram's AI labeling for ethical practices, be cautious using AI influencers, cloud staffers are using cloud to do the job sufficiently. So let's see, if I click on a time code, what happens? Okay, it will jump to that part of the video, which I think is very useful. Let's jump to another time code. Okay, overall, it's doing a pretty good job and it costs me two credits. <laughs> If I have 12,000 breath, I'm never gonna run out. Let's go to Harpa. And if I click summarize with Harpa, it opens up the sidebar overlay, which I'm more used to. I'm more used to the way Harpa operates. It has nested or key takeaways. I'll use nested so that it gives everything in order. And it is a little bit faster, but not that much because it already starts showing it. This is much more detailed. So we have multiple news stories that it covers. We talk about perplexity, the ethics debate, Microsoft's web usage content, California's law. We're gonna double check and see if all of these got mentioned in Merlin's review, but I believe this and Figma got missed and YouTube's content removal policy, but maybe I'm wrong. So let's see, perplexity, Microsoft boss, lack of clarity, AI regulation. So this is the California law, YouTube, Instagram, be cautious. Merlin has missed the Figma news story. So it's done a less effective job. That's annoying. <laughs> That's really a big problem for me and already I'm hesitant to recommend Merlin because that's such a useful and important tool for me. Let's try working for something similar on a blog post and let's see what Merlin's capable of. Here's an extensive blog post on how to design a beautiful logo that I posted to my blog before Christmas last year. So I wanna see how much Merlin understands versus how much Harpa understands. This time I'm gonna use Harpa first. There's probably a way to activate Harpa with your keyboard. I don't know what it is because I've never cared. It's not that big a deal for me to hit that. So usually it says, okay, it says if you hit slash slash, let's try that. Okay, so that works and pulls it up that way. You can monitor the page, extract the data, repurpose the data, let's do summarize. It's a very good summarization. Now let's try what Merlin can do. Chat with this webpage. They have a button to give, give me summary, that's what I want. It starts talking about blog improvement, taking quick action, executing ideas. Let me see if I talk about that in here. So this is really an instructional post with a lot of steps. I wonder if it's pulling data from similar posts at the bottom. All of this 
is trash. So this is the end of the blog post. Everything down here is extraneous. I don't know why it gave me a bunch of trash, but that's kind of annoying. Um, you can change the model as well. So you can use ChatGB 3.54, 4.0, Cloud.5, 3.5 Sonnet, which is pretty interesting. Let's try and compare a couple of these. Here's the models I have access to, Mixtral and Mr. Large. These are open source models, so they're free. The two Google models from Gemini, 1.5 Pro and Flash, Cloud 3 Opus, and then Cloud 3.5 Sonnet, which is the best version of Cloud 3.5. Let's switch to that and try this again. Start a new chat and we're gonna chat with this web page. Give me a summary. So I have a blog post about Gutenberg and that seems to be what it's talking about here. So it's not smart enough to know that similar post is not relevant content. It doesn't matter which model I'm using. This is Merlin sending the wrong data. It can't tell different sections of a blog post apart. That means if you have a blog post with a lot of comments, there's a very good chance all of the comments will end up getting added in here. That's not a huge problem, but it's a pretty dumb mistake to make for a tool that really brags about what it can do. Let's go a step back and let's go back to Merlin here. So you can give it access to the web, deep access, turbo access, or have it off. So I don't need it on right now. Choose which model I'm using, chatbots. Let's see what this says. So you can build a chatbot, or you can choose a prompt scientist, an article brainstormer, translator. I guess you can flirt with this one. That's weird. Obi-Wan Kenobi. These things just look like trash, like really creepy. You talk to Satan, I guess. Talk to a girlfriend. I don't know why these chatbots are here. These are the ones they made, I guess the top five and then the rest, which they're obviously not paying any attention to. They're not monitoring or letting or paying attention to what people are making. These are all basically useless. It's really hard to see the value in this tool because so far it's lost to a free tool in the first two tasks. It's not charging meetings. Like why do I want to talk to Oppenheimer or Barbie or Ted Lasso? Like these are, shouldn't be here. Those are really dumb. It does speak a lot of languages, I guess that's helpful. So go down to its promises. It says it can generate AI art. Let's see if I can get it to do that. It has code interpreter, which is good. Generate image, here we go. So I'm have a robot dog jumping over a lion. We're gonna test is if it can handle the positioning and the complexity of this prompt and see what type of images it will generate and what shape it will make. Okay, so it's using SDXL 0.9. Really weird choice. It means this is probably gonna look bad. Stable Diffusion XL 0.9 is a model that's almost two years old, but this is way better than I was expecting. It got everything wrong. You see that made that mistake, but the overall image is okay. Let's look at the pricing. So the different models charge different prices, 10 credits per image. Dream Shape is 10, Absolute Reality is 1.6, Anime Pastel Dream, Dream Shape 1. Point, Dream Shape 6, Dolly 3, Dolly 2. Dolly's definitely not gonna be worth it. Let's try Dream Shape V7 and see if it works. And then they have a new image generator. We'll try this. Let's try my original prompt again, just to, to test this first. And then we'll try their new model. So a robot dog jumping over lion. We just end up with a robot dog lion. Maybe down there is a tiny dog, I'm not sure. This image is cool, but not what I asked for. And that's very standard. This bonkers thing, I guess it's okay. What they'll have on the side, they have a lot of different models. This is a really tough way to generate images. As much as this is useful, this requires you to go through a massive process. First, you have to choose which type of model do I wanna use? HD, anime, portrait, realism, text, artistic. It's gonna be tough to know what you want, but let's try generating one image. So we're gonna do the same prompt again, see if it can generate the image. This time it will generate a square because square is checked off over here. It has some default image things. So YouTube shorts nine by 16 or down here, we see nine by 16 for tall portrait has the same thing again. So it's incapable of generating the correct image. To me, it's so cute, but not useful. This is how I feel about most image generators. I really encourage things to stay in their lane. It all boils down to value. Is it worth the cost of the lifetime deal? Every single test where I ran Merlin against what Harp AI does, Harpa's free version beat Merlin's paid version, and that's very disappointing. The problem is the way it's wrapping its prompts and sending the information, whether we use ChatGPT or one of the other AI models. There are a lot of these tools on the market that promise to give you tools to every single other AI out there, and there is value in that. If you wanna test what the paid models from Claude and Google are worth before you start investing money and paying the $20 a month, this is a way to test that. It is reasonable pricing, the cost per prompt, the way everything works out. I think it's very reasonable. Overall, for my personal use case, I'm not doing code interpreting. I don't really jump between models. I did not like the 
like built-in chatbots that most of them seemed creepy. It's a direction that I don't like to go in with AI. That's why I never cover that stuff on my channel. So as much as I was hoping to recommend Merlin, at the best I can give it a meh. It's not good and it's not bad. It's middle of the road. The only reason to invest is that it's a lifetime deal for the next little more than a week and hoping for the tool to improve. That's the main reason I invested. It's not good enough for me to give it a glowing review and it's not bad enough for me to kick it to the curb and refund it. I could see the tool possibly becoming more useful in the future. It really just depends on your personal use case. Overall, I recommend trying the free version before you grab the paid version, but that's the best I can do. My goal is always to give you the most valuable recommendations. That's why this is different than a lot of other AI channels that say every tool is great. You'll notice I give negative reviews of most of the tools that I review because you just don't need them. I can get the exact same result from a free tool or from copying and pasting the transcript or even pasting the URL of the video into ChatGPT. It will grab the transcript itself and give me a better summary than Merlin generated on its own. Overall, my main recommendation is to just stick with your core tools right now. Probably all you need is ChatGPT, possibly the free version of Harpa if you need a Chrome plugin. Merlin, sorry, but just you didn't quite make it. If you guys found this video useful, entertaining, or at least a little bit educational, please take a moment to hit the like button to help other people to see this channel and to see that there are AI content creators who do leave negative reviews to let you know there are some cool tools and there are a lot of bad tools. You don't need to buy everything. This channel is not driven by its affiliate income, even though I do have affiliate links here and there. It's really supported by another part of my business, so I'm not dependent on affiliate income. That means I don't have to try and push and sell every single product that I recommend on the channel. You're going to see a lot more negative reviews for me a lot more integrity and that's really important core part of my business model if that's what you're looking for please take a moment hit subscribe so more of my videos will appear in your feed and if you hit the bell button every single time i post a video you will get notified that's my personal experience with merlin but i would love to know if you have a different experience take time download the free tool kick the tires test it out and let me know if there's something that i missed i didn't test every feature i just test the features that were most useful to me but you probably have different needs different experiences let me know in the comments below channel this small you know that i personally read review every single single comment and I'll be the one replying myself. Thank you for making it all the way to the end. See you in the next video. Thank you so much for watching one of my videos. Hit the like button and then I've got a couple of sweet videos that I think you're going to like. I've got one here and another one over here. You're going to love them.